Okay. Well, I'll do it. Dear Lord God, thank you for another day. <coughs> thank you for uh, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for uh, your continuous mercy and grace. Lord God, and as we get ready to partake in your word, we ask that you illuminate it, Father God, and you, we ask that you um, grant us uh, a heart that's prepared to receive your word, Father God, and we want to just pray for everyone who's uh, going to be in this meeting, whether they're reading and studying or just listening, Father God, we just pray that uh, we all can be of one accord, one mind, one purpose. It was to finding and seeing your will, your son, your salvation, and your grace to us all, Father. Mm -hmm. So let us start today, Father God, as we go over the text, Luke 6, 1 through 11. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we did quite a bit of things earlier before we got started, but I think our lesson this week is session 11. We're getting too close to the end of our, uh, we're getting close to the end of our study in Luke. So I want to point out that we'll be starting to pick up the new Sunday school books and those who are not able to get out and get them, uh, you know, uh, I think we have a few people who are willing to, if you contact them, to try to deliver them to you. So because we want to continue in the Word, and the new book is going to be a continuation in Luke as well. But uh, this week, I think uh, Jesus, as we said last, from last week, Jesus continued to uh, fame and move along and, and, and kept teaching. And uh, so his followers became grow bigger, and as well as the, some of his adversaries were also trying to uh, take him off, of, take his focus off his mission and his course. And so, like we did last week, we pointed out that Jesus pointed out that our request should address the deeper needs, not just our personal needs of health, food, shelter, things like that, but we should be f focusing on the forgiveness of sin. And again, I mentioned the triple threat that we talked about, our, po our posture, our praise, and our prayers. And then today's lesson, we're going to meet Jesus Jesus meets the people's need, people belong, and then we're going to also, we had the lesson a little bit in our books today, if you would have read that first paragraph, it was talking about uh, people today, we have uh, organizations and groups that we belong to, and uh the Sunday school lesson pointed out that there was a, a guy, he was in a homeowner's association, and he decided that he wanted to paint his house a certain color. And so uh, the organization got on his case because he was not following the rules of the organization. So that was saying that I'm just bringing the book. I think they brought that up to be saying that uh, when you're in organization, there's programs and things that you have to follow. And uh, our lesson today is going to see how these programs and rituals and things that people do can sometimes get in the way of the purpose that we have been called to fulfill. So with that being said as a introduction to our lesson today, before we get started, I would like to remind us that we should be muting our mics if we're not speaking at this time. And uh, 
we're going to move on to which is our uh, first portion of the lesson and it's going to be in Luke chapter 6 the verses 1 and 2 and it's going to be underneath the title of uh, Hope no, Lord of the Sabbath. I'm on the wrong page. Okay, but my readers are probably on the one, so Brother Allen, Sister yeah. Allen, you're the readers for today. Can you get us started with Luke? Uh, what is it called? The Work on the Sabbath? Uh, yeah. Luke 6. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is it, Allen. Page, 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 page 102. Page 102. Yeah, page right. one. Mm -hmm. The book according to St. Luke, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. On the Sabbath he passed through the grain fields, and his disciples were picking heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath. Okay, thank you. So that, you see, is a very short verse, but we look at the uh, two perspectives in this. We look at the actions of the disciples and the response of the religious leaders to their actions. And so, again, our book points out, too, that the Sabbath day was another Sabbath day. And so time is passing. Jesus is journeying to and fro. But he's always right on task being where he needs to be on the Sabbath day. And on this particular day, as they passed through the grain fields, they were picking some um, corn or grain and rubbing it together. And so they were eating. And now the Old Testament talks about the Sabbath day and uh, how you should keep it holy and not um, do work and stuff like that. And this is what the Pharisees were always trying to hold folks accountable for, following the law. And so... As they went through there, the Pharisees looked at them. So you notice, though, the point the book pointed out that the disciples or the followers of Jesus was eating these grains. But even Joe, though it was lawful, it still was someone else's grain. And I'm, I don't know. This is just my impression. But they don't say in our book that Jesus was participating in this eating. And uh, but then the Pharisees were like. Uh, why are they doing this and not, it's not lawful to do this on the Sabbath day? So I think the question is what, uh, the question is how does this illustrate the bigger picture of uh, keeping the law over taking care of our other needs. I think uh, I think this this entire lesson is going to is going to reveal. Uh, uh, that the scribes and the Pharisees were what what we consider to be today legalists, and there were six hundred and some laws, and uh, and we know that nobody can really keep all those laws. What Jesus is in uh, 
the book of Matthew in 17 through 20, he talks about he came to fulfill the law, not to destroy the law. And they they thought that he, he had come to destroy the law. And they thought that they had a lock on the law. Mm-hmm. And Jesus was showing them that it's never a wrong time to do a righteous deed. In fact, in the last uh, part in uh, in Matthew uh, 17 or 18, it says not one jot or tittle will be removed from the law. It all has to come to pass. But the last one, verse 20 in Matthew says that It says, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you you by no means will enter into the kingdom. That, that simply means that what Jesus was doing, he was going over and above taking care of people. And that's our job here is to take care of people. It's never a bad time to take care of people. It's never a bad time uh, to feed people. It's never a bad time to heal people. They were saying that you shouldn't do these things on a certain day at a certain time. Jesus was saying, no, no, no. This is fulfilling the law. This is going over and above. And that's all he asked us to do. Anytime we see somebody in need, somebody hungry, da, 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 we need to take care of it no matter what time it is. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Brother Joel, I, I yeah. believe uh, um, I believe the lesson is very speaking to something that we do all the time. We, we mix up uh, two words that are uh, different. We talk about being passionate about something and we talk about compassion what we're going to see throughout this lesson is how jesus as the lesson title says reigns that or we could even go back to even better than that the scripture tells us that uh, that uh even while we were yet sinners He died for us, okay? In other words, that's the compassion that takes place from the very beginning as we begin to be uh, uh, believers. And so, and and I'll just end with this. I oftentimes listen to, to hear what young people say, and they say, don't just talk about it, be about it. And the beauty of that is that in religious circles, we do more passionate talking <laughs> than we do of being about it. Very good. Yeah. That's and so I true. think you hit my next question right on the head with what were some of the rituals and observations <laughs> draw that people draw close to Christ, observed that draw people closer to Christ, which one might pu- push people farther away. You know, and this is the thing, like you said, a lot of times we talk about trying to bring people closer and closer to him, but the actions of compassion and things like that are not there. And those are the things when you're healing and you're coming to the church looking for healing and then you get the cold shoulder, you know, do you want to be there? Is that helping you in your need? So that was the next question, you know, rituals. Observe that draw people closer and rituals that push people farther away. And these are things that you have to um, be aware that they do exist. And uh, we have to, like you said, you know, the compassion plus the other word that you use. Passion. But anyone, uh, yes. Anyone else? But in all practicality, all they were doing is eating. What they yeah. were doing was customary for travelers to be able to nourish themselves on their travels. 
that's what they commonly did. That's why you had all those fields out there, and they could walk through a certain portion and feed themselves. So in all practicality, when I got up this morning, I did boil some water and make some cereal to eat. It's the <laughs> Sabbath, but I'm honoring God's body by feeding it so I don't pass out. So they were, yes. there's, you can be so strict on the law that you lose common sense. Right. <laughs> right. And, and then we go back to off. Yes, and we <laughs> go back to we go back to the Leviticus laws and rules. They had set laws aside. It was the law of gleaning, right? And right. then and the law of planting. So when people were traveling, the compassion was that hey, even if somebody's walking and they're hungry and they're traveling, at those times they didn't have fast food and McDonald's and stuff. You're on a long journey and you get a little hungry. They had said the rule is if somebody don't come into your field and just harvest up everything and go take it to the market, then they can get a little something, something to eat. That was the compassion that Moses and the laws and all of them set up. And so the religious leaders were not looking at that. They were looking, their whole agenda was off the point from the beginning. So go ahead. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Sister Elaine. Yes, it's, it's the same as what we do today. As someone has already said, a person comes to church in need of, they may at that moment have a strong desire to uh, find out who Christ is. They hear church music playing. They come into church, but they're not dressed as we church people are dressed. And so right away, our rules, our rituals, and thought of how you're supposed to be when you come to church comes into play rather than, uh, yes, someone has come into church and uh, seeking God. Uh, We're not uh, thinking about what may be in that person's heart or the need that they have, we're so focused on how they look. And as a result, uh, that, yes, you don't think a person may feel that or even see that. And uh, some people may turn around and go back out, uh, but depending upon how they were received will determine whether or not they will choose to stay and perhaps become a member of that body of Christ. Amen. Yes. Let me, this is Brother Willie. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think sometimes we get so involved with the word that we forget about the meaning of it. And I think that's what the sister just said, is we can use the word in, in itself, and we can, and it can go against the meaning of the word. I mean, what is it really supposed to be for? Okay. Very good, very good. Yep, yep, I, I agree. <laughs> yep, so there we have the first couple of verses right there. Why are you doing what is lawful, not lawful, on the Sabbath? Mm-hmm. And like they said, you know, you I think we about covered those two verses pretty good, unless anyone else has something to say about it. We, we paid attention to the different um, approaches of Jesus versus the interpretation of the uh, Pharisees. And now we're going to move on to our next section, which is... Can I say oh, one thing real quick? <laughs> Can, I say something? Can I say something real quick? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I think another thing that we can add to it is that they were not really interested in, you know, um, what those um, disciples were doing. Right. Or, uh, but they were more interested in Jesus not telling them uh-huh. not to do it, you know, because uh-huh. they, they, they say, look, you are the leader. You are supposed to know the law. You know it all. Uh, look at these guys. Look at what they're doing, you know. So the, the, that uh, uh, indignation was really towards Jesus Christ, you know, uh, because while they were coming, like everybody has said, they were hungry and you could eat, you know. And I think it was here uh, some time ago, they said even if you went to the store, grocery store, and stole food, if you were hungry, you know, you would not be prosecuted. 
But if you went to the store to steal, to go and sell, to make profit, right. you will be prosecuted. So I was just mm -hmm. looking at it, the, you know, the same way. The, uh, the focus was really on Jesus Christ, you know, not on what those people were doing. Say so you know the law, so you are the one really breaking it because they are following you. They are following your command. They are following your leadership. You know, just wanted to add that one. But everything said very good. Okay, very good. And I think the last paragraph in our Sunday school book states it out that the last sentence says, whether in regards to the Sabbath or other commands, we need to see Jesus as the source the ruler and the object of all spiritual activity. Amen. So there it is now. We're going to go on to the next verses, which are 3 through 5 in chapter 6. Lord of the Sabbath. Okay, all right, Lord. readers. It's okay, Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, the scripture according to St. Luke 6. Three through five, Jesus answered them, Haven't you read what David and those who were with him did when he was hungry? How he... Uh, <laughs> how he entered? <laughs> entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of presents which is not lawful for uh, to, to do, but for the priest to eat. He gave some to those who were with him. Then he told them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. So, there we have it in number three to five as we look at that you notice how jesus used the old testament mm -hmm. to uh examine and explain and clarify some of the things that were in the hearts of these pharisees and he read he said have he said read the all old testament scriptures about david and uh, many of us know that story about David when he was being pursued, how he went into the temple, and he ate the bread of presence. And basically, basically, he went into the temple, which was only supposed to be, priests were supposed to be in there. And, yeah. uh, but uh, the priest gave him bread and everything that was only prescribed for the priest to eat. But since David had told him he was on a mission for the king, they presented it to him, even though, you know, it was lawful by law or, or ritual. He still did, and they gave him enough not only for himself, but for his uh, soldiers that was with him. And I think what this is trying to tell us is rituals have their place, but they should not get in the way of doing right or providing for other folks. And that's why in verse 4, which was our memory verse for this week, it, it states that, uh, uh, wait a minute, let me, I got it right here. It says, how mm -hmm. to enter into God's house. Uh, no, 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 maybe that's the wrong one. But anyway, it was like the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath as well. Mm -hmm. And he had said that, right? Right. Yeah, yeah that is right. verse five. Right. Okay. So basically, they were. He he just pointed to them that they that they they knew this, and then and and then how he tries to Jesus takes the uh, opportunity put them in the forefront like haven't you read you know we're supposed to be the leaders and everything don't you have your bible don't you know right. these things and uh you know but like uh you're sitting there trying to be judgmental 
Right. And yeah. so the question. And I, I think too, Joe. Uh, we just mentioned. Somebody just mentioned that their purpose there was not to uh, uh, to to do one thing beside discredit Jesus, discount Jesus' behavior. Whatever he had done would have been, you know, something that they would have would not have agreed with. So that, their purpose there was simply legalism, and they were going to get him on legalism. That was their, their job there, because they were supposed to be the big dogs on the block, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought that he had come to destroy the law, and he told them that that wasn't his purpose. Right. And he also, you know... Yeah, that was his purpose because he, 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 he was not. He was to fulfill it. And he said, you know, and then he, he made sure that he made the point that, you know, he was Messiah and that he was here to fulfill, not to destroy, to build up, to seek, to save, you know, and to put these guys back keep the people on the right track because the, the Pharisees were putting them on such a hard burden on them that it was hard for anyone because what did you say at the beginning? There were so many different rules and laws that you could get so tangled up in doing all these different things that the real real religious function would go right by you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I was reading in the book of Jubilees, if you walked too far from your dwelling on the Sabbath, that couldn't be considered work. Oh, boy. Hmm. <laughs> if you walk to your house? <laughs> yeah. yeah but they didn't have cars, so how? No. But, but if you walked too far from where you lived, let's say you walked uh, 10 miles to another person's house, that was considered work. Because they had uh, gauges on how far you could go from your dwelling on the Sabbath, mm -hmm. which it was considered work. Yeah. I mean, who's going to abide by these the, these these laws and rules? Nobody. 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 Well, who can keep them? So as you no. can, so as you can see right now, and from last week in our studies that. Jesus' relationship with these spiritual leaders were on a spiral downhill. They weren't getting any closer together because every time Jesus would do an act of compassion, they were coming and hitting him over the head with the uh, legal book of the law. That's you know, right. They was crowning him. They was going to make him king because they was crowning him with the law. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. That's why I say so much that if you look again in Matthew, even Matthew, they used to, and Luke as well, they always were on these Pharisees and these scribes' case because they were so busy. I mean, really? so tremendously busy trying Hello. to legalize and legitimize everything to elevate again in the middle, rise themselves up to look. Right. Look, I know, you know, I'm the one in charge here. I know. Look to me now, Jesus. This is why they're spiraling down because these people are following Jesus not only because of. I uh, remember his triple threat. He did the. He did the miracles. He was right. the teachers of the law. And he was fulfilling it. And they didn't like that. The people were following him, and they were getting less and less popular. Anyway, anyone else? That's right. That's one of the reasons. I think that his, his, his compassion and everything was really, really driving a distance between them. Yep. I think that was the main thing that had them going on, their rituals. Well, I believe he also took that as an opportunity. Well, he was trying to, even though the Pharisees didn't receive it. That was an opportunity also to get them to spiritually see that human need is always supersedes uh, rules and regulations. Right. And that's why he went to uh, the Old Testament uh, with respect to uh, the story of when David 
was traveling with his uh, army and they needed the food, they went into the temple and ate some of that bread of presence, which is consecrated bread uh, for the priest, but they ate it only because that was what they needed at that time. And as you already said, there's no fast food places, so they <laughs> had to consume what was available at that time. And he pointed that out to the Pharisees, saying that, so if you are condemning what we are uh, what what the disciples are doing, then you will also have to consume. I mean, will also have to Condem then David. hold David condemn David. Condemn David. Um, and but the idea was to get them to spiritually see and understand, which of course we see that they did not. <laughs> now, if that uh, you know, and this is all the inside job too. You know that heart. Everybody that's hearing this message has a different heart, okay? And and the, and it's got to be prepared. What? Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Mr. Joe. Uh, I, I, I want to. I just want to affirm uh, something that uh, Mrs. Allen said earlier about. Uh, uh, persons coming to our uh, congregation, and this this is not uh, historical, uh, uh, biblical. Okay, a uh, gentleman that I met on the tennis court one night told me that he had been to our church, and he really didn't want to go, but his wife kept pushing him, and he and he got up and he went to church, and when he got there, a person met him at the door, and said. Church doesn't start until 11 o'clock. He was happy as, good, he, as if he had good sense because he could go back home and tell his wife, <laughs> I went, but the man at the door told me they didn't start until 11 o'clock. Now, that's, that's exactly what our lesson is teaching us. But again, it's not in Matthew. It's not in Luke. This is what happened at 5400 uh, Silver Hill Road. Okay, that was a bad representation, huh? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know who that was. <laughs> hey, uh, just just to be uh, just just to be fair with the analyzation, the scenario there. Let's not forget that the person that showed up also had. Uh, some skin in the game. He didn't want to show up in the first place. <laughs> so, so that guy also had larceny in his heart starting off. And the guy that okay. met him at the door was certainly wrong. He didn't have done that. I like that. But, but uh, you, you can never, just like I just said, it's never uh, a wrong time to do a righteous deed. The guy was wrong. He should have uh, <laughs> talked to the guy until 11 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and invited him in and say, hey, would you like some water? Would you like this? And just carried on a conversation until church started. But the guy didn't want to be there, so consequently when he heard we don't start until 11 o'clock, he hit the bricks right away, I'm sure. <laughs> well, well, look, again, that goes back to our whole uh, definition of compassion. The the. Yes. A person who receives a compassionate action is it, not, we, we should never rationalize their behavior. It's what our behavior is. As the scripture says, even while we were sinners, what did God do? He, yeah. he died for our yeah. sins, okay? Right. So, so we can never, ever, we can never, ever, uh, rationalize the behavior of the person that we are being compassionate to. That's correct. That's also, that also, um, also, also, brother Joe, that brother Joe. Also, yeah. also, the gentleman who went back and to tell his wife that church didn't start at eleven. She he'll never go back. 
He always had that excuse. That's right. You see, he will always have that excuse. <laughs> so she can't go to him no more and tell him to go to church. He said, I went. They didn't let me in. I'm not going back. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So that hurts also. Yeah, that's true. But you see, don't, don't forget now, it's everybody now. Uh, Romans 3, 23 tells us, for all have seen. You know, so the gentleman too bears some responsibility. That's it's, right. It's just like that. I mean, yes, the man at the church, I mean, could have said something else, but the also the other gentleman too also bears some responsibility. It's for everyone. Yeah, that's right. For for, yeah. Us, for God so loved the world and gave His only begotten Son that whosoever. Right. So that one is included too. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Very good. Yeah. I agree. That person who who went up there, he was looking for a reason not to go in. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I I defer a little bit. I tend to uh, agree with uh, Brother Tap Scott because the duty is always on us as Christians. Um, be you know, to show ourselves uh, really? friendly, right. invite the gentleman in. Yes, yeah. he could, you know, he he's a non-believer. This lesson is talking yeah. about believers and non-believers. Right. He's a non-believer. Yes, he has a certain kind of attitude. But we, we what do I as a Christian, how do I model the image, the behavior of Christ in such a way that perhaps the thinking that this non-believer has mm. about those good church people, uh, mm. I could change that. Uh, okay, yeah. you, uh, you, right. It's something he could have said. He, right, he could have invited him in, offered him some water. Yes, saying we don't really start until 11 o'clock. However, you are welcome to sit here. Uh, you know, some water, you know, until that time. Right. Mm. Uh, yes, we all agree mm. with that. We all agree no. with that. Jesus used the non-believers to, to teach uh, Christians uh, his ways. So, yes, so he is also, everybody's going to give an account of himself, you know. Uh, you right. will have believers too who go to churches and they leave. So it can also be applied to a believer. So yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not only non-believer. Yeah. The it's believer because, can come to the church too and say, oh, they didn't greet me well at the church, so I'm going back home. Right. <laughs> right. right. You can make excuse for any, any person. Yeah. But the responsibility is on the individual. How yeah. far do you want to serve God? How yeah. far do you want Jesus Christ? Right. Let nothing, nothing stop you. You know. Yeah, and you have to take that approach. You have to take that approach to every situation is uh, you don't know where the other person is coming from. That's right. And when you first encountered him and he walked up to that door, even though it's not time, it's welcome. Yeah. Right? Welcome. Right. Yeah. What's your name? How are you doing today? Oh, that's good. You got to make that initial step to make a relationship right. with this man before you start laying down the legal rules of our church. Yeah, you yeah. know, you have to make that relationship. It's like, welcome, come on in. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh, 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 like I'm just a doorkeeper, but I'm gonna break the rule. I'm gonna let you in, even though it ain't time to start yet. Right. You know, you got to start that up, and then he, then the man, even though he had that larceny in his heart from the jump. He was like, well, what do you know? You know, and James always approaches that stuff because, like the sister said earlier, now he might have had some raggedy clothes on, too. And and he looked at him and said, "Hmm, I don't want him in my church. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? Or he could have been the brother. He could have even came with a good suit on. But, again, this guy might not have had the good suit on and say, I don't want him in here making me look bad. But the, the relationship was not created from the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's the right. most thing that that's Brother right. Tab Scott was talking about, Sister Allen touched on, that's Brother right. Allen touched on, right. and everyone who's 
folks so far has touched on the point that establishing that relationship of compassion, being about compassion, not just talking about it, figuring out a way to contact. We don't know. When we walk out of here today and we go out and we start talking to people in the world, we do not know who God's going to put in our path. That's right. And, you know, and we don't know what report he's going to, what they're going to report back to their wives at home. I went, <laughs> you know, and so it's these also, are the, it's also, though, while we're on this, uh, the word time and timing is in the middle of this entire lesson. Uh-huh. Timing. Mm-hmm. It's like Mr. Tapscott say, don't just talk about it, be about mm-hmm. it. 24 7 you have to make it habitual yep. it's got to be habitual at work at home at ch- everywhere you go somebody's always watching you mm-hmm. and that's what happened to that guy when he came up to the door that guy was not on his game the guy that told him that church didn't start until 11 that guy was watching him mm-hmm. he said the wrong thing mm-hmm. at the right time yeah. And so like you said, it's a continuous walk and it's got to dwell. You got to be dwelling in the will of the Lord at all times when you're doing that walk. Correct? Anyone else? Right. Yeah, Brother Joe. Yes, this is Charles Jones. Look, yes. let me tell you, I lost my job and I called the church to get a handout to get some food for my family. And I talked to Sister Mary Ann. And I came up to the church. They gave me some food. And Dick, and, and uh, Reverend Few called me that evening and invited me back to the church. And I came back that following Sunday. And I've been coming back ever since. So it's, it's what you say. I didn't go to the church to go to there. I went there to get some food. But they fed me. And I went back. And I've been going back ever since. So Amen. you see, it depends. It depends on who you meet. And mm-hmm. Sister Mary Ann was the first person I talked to, and she gave me some food for me and my family. And Amen. we've been coming back ever since. Amen. Amen. Yep. Well, we got to get to our next section. So is there any last words on this portion before we go on to 6 through 11? Uh, Brother Joe, yes. can I just say one thing? This Rowena, yes. um, we as believers, we need to remember what the church is, a body of believers, a house of prayer and worship, meditation, and reaching out. But when that Another thing, as a doorkeeper, we have to, after we, as you said, develop that relationship, uh, you know, you're welcome and everything. But also that man, we could have said, uh, you know, well, no, we haven't started yet, but you're welcome to come in and yes. and uh, sit and pray, uh, meditate. You know what I'm saying? And if the music is on, that may have been a person who needed to just come in and sit. There are some churches that uh, the door is not locked. There's no uh, chain around the church. People can come in and sit and meditate, pray, or just reflect on the Lord. So I think we should keep in mind also, aside from offering them water and things, offer them to come in and just pray, meditate, and sit. The doors of the church are now open. Always open. (laughs) Always open. Yes. Okay, well, that's good. Now we're going to do God on the Sabbath, or do good on the Sabbath. And that's going to be six, verses 6 through 11. Verses 6 through 11, do good on the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. A man 
was there whose right hand was shriveled. The scribes and Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath so that they could find a charge against him. But he knew their thoughts and told the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand here. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at them all, he told him, stretch out your hand. He did, and his hand was restored. They, however, were filled with rage and started discussing with one another what they might do to Jesus. All right. Thank you for the reading of God's word. Thank you. And so here we are. As we say it, it's another Sabbath. Jesus is in his travels. He's a busy man. <laughs> Traveling, <laughs> going to the synagogue, the synagogue, trying to show and demonstrate compassion and love and fulfill his purpose of seeking and searching and finding that which was lost and bringing them all back. And the Pharisees and the scribes were on their job as well, trying to block all his moves. But um, in this, on another Sabbath day, you know, he, the man with the shriveled hand was there. And Jesus immediately, he wanted to make sure that he showed them that he was the Lord over this Sabbath, and he also reigned over sickness and uh, disease. And when he got in there, the, you know, the scribes, they were all right there, and they were already alerted of Jesus' interpretation of the Sabbath because they had already heard, I don't know, like he had traveled. This might not have been the same church, but... This might be another group of these guys here waiting on him. Just their same reason, again, they're sitting there waiting on him right. to do something that's not lawful, that's not legal. You know, their hearts, their hearts. we got to look at their hearts all, all messed up. And so, but Jesus really was a master of knowing their thoughts and also of flipping the script, as I may use that word, on them, because knowing their will, he would always flip it and put the, not only, not only he wouldn't just, like, like we used the man as an example how he stopped the man at the door, okay, but Jesus didn't use his authority to stop them, he threw them in to the, where, where, they, where they really wanted to be, in front of everyone, it's like, right. did he see where he says, and I ask you, you know, and do you mm -hmm. know these things? You see how he put that in there? Now, not only Jesus is not trying to correct them through his words, he want to make sure that they, everybody else is looking at these guys right now, too, these that's legalists. Right. That's huh? right. And so, that's see, and, that's, and this is where the Holy Spirit comes in, where the scribes and the Pharisees, where is their Holy Spirit at at this time? And so right. this is why he's trying to put them in front of everything and say, okay, see right. how he used the example right there? Is it lawful? Here's another question. Now he's, now he's getting them, he's hitting right. them with the law, with right. their masters of it. They're experts of the law, right? Now right. he didn't flip the script on them. See? They're experts. Is it lawful to do good? Right. Huh? <laughs> to save life? Huh? He got them now. What they going to say? I bet you, I, can you see them standing there? <laughs> Is it no good to do good today? Right now. They started discussing right. how, how they're going to, right. how, what they're going to do to him. That's why the next sentence said they started discussing what they might do to him. Now, keep, keep in mind, too, keep in mind that they are becoming fully exposed at this right. point. Exactly. Because he just healed somebody. And they are thinking about what to do with it. Now, he just did good, but they have become enraged. And enraged. 
it's not just anger. That means that they're hinging on madness. That means the next step is doing something to you when you get to that stage. Right, right. And they did. They did do something to them. Yeah. See, why, see, the most important question is, like right now, why are we here? Yeah. Are we here looking on fault to catch Brother bro, brother Joe in a lie or Brother Allen or Sister Allen saying something that ain't legal? Or are we here trying to fortify ourselves and become stronger in, in our dwelling and growth in the Lord? And see, this is the thing that they came in, like we used the example, they came in with the wrong agenda, a hidden agenda already. And they just was ready I'm on, I'm to... On a, I'm on my Sunday school class at my church. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, don't forget to turn your mics off if you're not speaking. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I I uh, would have to say they were definitely trying to uh, catch Jesus, uh, of course, for various reasons, and and we know that it was to uh, make sure that he was not the one that took away their positions and all, and and they were really threatened. But uh, back to the Sabbath, uh, if you if you study the whole thing, as as God said in uh, I believe it's Genesis chapter 2, um, the beginning mm-hmm. after God had done all of the creation and all, he rested. Sure. And, and he said that we were to honor this day, and, and he gave it to us to rest. But now you can get into a whole lot of different controversies. For instance, the Sabbath would have been Saturday, not Sunday, like we observe it. And then you can get into a whole lot of trouble with that, you know, well, you know, the Orthodox Jews still, um, from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, they don't move or they, you know, they don't work or whatever. But then just imagine if one of us were to get sick, have a, unfortunately an accident uh, on the Sabbath day. You're going to roll up to a hospital and, and don't expect that a doctor be working today. And, and they say, well, you know, it's the Sabbath day. I don't heal. The, you know, we don't cheat you today. <laughs> you come back tomorrow, you know, you had a heart attack today, unfortunately, but you just had it on the wrong day. But, but so, so I think the, the term is we're so heavenly bound, we know earthly good. And we just, just go crazy with uh, rules and regulations and stuff. Uh, for various reasons, and uh, and I think this is what Jesus was saying. The Sabbath was for us. Definitely, you need to rest. You can't run so many days without rest. And uh, but if if you're if you have to work on a Sunday, well, certainly you may honor Monday or Tuesday or whenever you you have that time. But um, but God gave it to us to rest for a reason. We're humans, and we need a day of rest. But certainly not to uh, use it against other people. Brother Joe, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Also, uh, Jesus makes it very, very simple. You know, uh, whenever Jesus is teaching or he's being accused or you know, he, he it's a very simple question like um, Brother Thomas has said, "Why do you circumcise on the Sabbath?" I mean, it's simple that if it falls on that day, you know, you the eighth day, you do that, and if it falls on the Sabbath, don't you guys do it? Then what of your animals, your ox, your ass? Don't you take them for watering? Don't you water them on that day? Don't you feed them? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's just right before us there. So the only thing is that they have just refused to see Jesus for what he is, you know? That he is God. He can forgive sins. He can heal I mean, he's Lord of the Sabbath. They don't want to accept that. They are looking for somebody who is macho, who is, you know, maybe military going to rescue them from the Romans, you know, and that's why he was born in Bethlehem, you know. So they just can't take it in, you know. And these are the things that are mystery of the Scripture, you know. That's God's plan. He chose to send the Messiah the way he did. But these religious leaders are just refusing to accept it. You know, when you refuse to accept something, you are going to do everything possible, you know, to to make your case. So that is what they're doing. Yeah. All right. Now, let's, let, yes. 
Uh, this is Freddie. Um, I just want, because we're almost at the end of the lesson, but I wanted to put this out to ask people to check this out. On page 102 of our lesson, in the Did You Know box, mm -hmm. there's part of the Hebrew Bible that's called the Mishnah. And if you go to that, you see all the rules that were set up for the Shabbat. All yeah. you have to do is go to Google and put in Mishnah. And when yeah. it comes up, you click on one, and then it'll have all these boxes. And you find the box that says the Shabbat. And when you click on Shabbat, you will see the Hebrew and the English translation of all the rules the that even just go to this one particular activity. So once we see all those many boxes, then we can realize how difficult the Pharisees had made it for people to worship God because they put all these extra rules in there. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance today or sometime tomorrow, just go there and check it out. Because I did a little bit last night. It was just amazing how they just tick, tick the pat for this, for that. So just put that out and for you all to, to think about as we wind yeah. the lesson down. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's a good that's a good assignment. Yeah, that's a good assignment. You didn't see all these rules that they had, like over, like they said earlier, over yeah, 600. Yeah, about 613. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good God. 613. Yeah, 613. <laughs> what is that? No, no, yeah, no, the, the rules, the, uh, the, the total number is 613. Yeah, 613. Whoa. Yeah. That's why we're saved by grace. There's no way anyone. There's only one perfect person, Jesus the Christ. None of us keep. We can't even keep the the rules that come out in modern today because Congress, our legislative system, laws are being made all the time. So no one can keep uh, the rules, but they are there. Simply as God and to keep, as God says in his word, decency and order. They are there for the express purpose of knowing how we are to reverence God when we enter into his presence or when we walk along the pathway in life. Because one of the key things in the lesson that was said, even though we are Christian, we live in this world. We are the light of the world for God. The key doctrine on page 107 says every Christian should seek to bring industry, government, and society as a whole under the sway of the principles of what? Righteousness, truth, and brotherly love, which is found in First Thessalonians, the third chapter, 12th verse. That's our whole duty. That's the duty. The duty of man. That's very good. We're running out of time now, so basically one little portion in, in, in verse 10 and 11 that I wanted to bring out before we finish is the when Jesus said to the man, uh, stretch out your hand, and he did it, and he was restored. And so this is an example of Jesus' power. But again, in all situations dealing with Jesus, even though he has the power, we have to be like this man here, which was obedient and having faith in Jesus by just lifting up his arm as Jesus had told him. And so this is, like she said, we are supposed to be lights and going out and shining into the world. And so if Jesus is reigning in our lives, what should we do? I think in my growth, I would shot, try to sow the seeds of the gospel. And mm -hmm. I use this as, uh, as Luke 8, verses 5 through 8 states that we should a, a sower went out to sow his seed, and God reigns over the sower, and God reigns over the seed. And when we are out there sowing, if we're obedient and doing what we're told, the Great Commission, go out and make disciples, bring those in, like she said, industry, friends, family members, 
clubs, organizations. If we're going out there sowing the seed in these places, right. God reigns over their hearts, whether right. it's the stony, whether it's the hard, whether it's the weed infested, or whether it's good. So I think that my we should be doing the sowing that we've been commanded in Matthew in the commission. Amen. And so anyone else before we uh, close? Yeah. yeah, I got one more thing to say on what you just said. Uh, the sowing and the reaping, uh, the sowing is with our conduct. Mm -hmm. We can, we can sow, sow verbally, mm. but our sowing is done with our conduct because people are watching what we do Every day, all day. It's so like I said, anywhere you go, you must be that light. And uh, once you create that habit, that habitual behavior in your life, you always got to smile for people. You know your word. You're abiding in your word. You try to make sure that you you are living the word. Uh that's your conduct is your sowing. All right. Brother Joe. Brother Joe. Yes. Uh, this is Brother Jones. Tonight at 9 o'clock on the Space and Bounce, they're showing the movie Saints and Sinners. A lot of folks have seen it, but if you haven't seen it, I think you'll love it if you either get a chance. It's called Saints and Sinners on the bound mm -hmm. station at 9 o'clock. Okay. okay. Saints and Sinners at 9 o'clock. Okay. Right. Well, Brother Allen, Sister Allen, it's time for us to close out. Will you do us the honors? Okay. Okay. Let's close in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, dear gracious Master, we do. Do indeed thank for for the opportunity once again to come together as a corporate body and study and learn more about how we are to be salt and light in this land which is not our home. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift and the faithfulness of our facilitator, Brother Joe Jackson. Continue to be a hedge of protection around him. Provide him with what he needs as he continued to do the work that you have called him to do at this time. Amen. We pray for everyone who decided to attend Sunday school today and to mm -hmm. sit under the learning, the teaching, because for mm -hmm. two or three are gathered in your name, you indeed are in the midst of us. We mm -hmm. just thank you and Lord and just praise your righteous and holy name, O oh God. Continue mm -hmm. to give us clean hearts, continue mm -hmm. to search us so mm -hmm. that each day we are transformed into Christ's likeness Amen. so that you are able to use us in those areas where you mm -hmm. speak to our hearts and mind where you have need for us as thought and light to be. Mm -hmm. Now, as yes. we uh, prepare to leave our Sunday school, oh God, keep watch over us. We mm -hmm. thank you for how you have kept us together in spite of the trying times of COVID, oh God, because mm -hmm. it only came to sift and search us to find mm -hmm. who is really on the pathway and who believes nothing can deter me from following Christ. Keep Amen. watching us until we meet again. This is our prayer we pray. In the name of your son, Jesus, whom you gave to us as your gift of love and which we receive this day. We pray this in his Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Before Thank we, you for our before we readers sign off, today. Like to say, Thank, before we sign off, I'd like to say hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. 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 Richard. Yes. Formerly, formerly Miss Archer. Now I'm Milka Richards. Good to talk to you guys and to listen in today on on Sunday school. Okay. Hey. <laughs>
That's hey, Nika. Nikki. I'm glad you got in. Nika. Nika. Yes, I know. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Yes. Hello. Happy New Year. Hey, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, Happy New Year to everybody. You yeah. too. And to you. And, and to you, yes. And to everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I'd like to thank our, I'd like to thank our boxing combination, the one, two punch of Sister and Brother Allen. They did a thank great you. job. Thank you. Thank you. Did a great job. Thank you. Hey. And next week will be next week will be their seven verses six. I mean, verses, chapter 7, verses 50, 40 to 50. And I think that should have been this lesson for this week, love. They're going to be talking love. about love. <laughs> on Valentine's time, they were leaving with a focus on love. Good. That's right. Oh, okay, right. Mr. Joe. Yes. Mr. Joe, I just want to share with you that the, the gentleman who, who, who came and was turned away is a saved person, is now a minister, and uh, uh, has actually come back to the church to find out that that the cold shoulder he got originally is not the, uh, what normally happens at First Baptist. Amen. Good. good to hear. Amen. Well, that's one thing good about First Baptist Suitland is the compassion yeah. is there and the uh Following the, heart. the correct way to do things is a lot of times there. I'm not going to say totally, but a lot of times it's there. And uh, that's right. the most important thing, you know, the approach, you know, how we approach situations. Right. Right. And so I think uh, we got a good core, and I'm just looking forward to getting back and being together to see everyone. Not this, the virtual is okay, but. It's not like I know Brother Allen and Mr. Tab Scott and Brother Charles and Brother Freddie and those guys. They are hands-on folks. They they are right there, people, people. You know, and I mean, you know, I mean, it's probably hard to this virtual thing. It's touching people, but it's not the same. But anyway, we're getting eight minutes to get prepared, and I, you know, I got to make my path for preparation. Okay. So <laughs> until next time. I thank everyone.